Yep, we have started recording. Okay, so welcome. Um, what I'm going to do is go through some just housekeeping, some introductions to what we're going to be covering, and then I'll, I'll do introductions of myself and my colleague who are on the call. So in today's session, um, we'll go over an introduction to the grants team for people who don't know us, an overview of the community chess grants, who can apply and what we can and cannot fund, the application process and deadlines, step-by-step -step application guidance, what happens next, and there'll be a little bit of time for questions at the end, um, but we'll be sharing contact details if you have any further questions. In terms of housekeeping, please keep yourself on mute the whole time. Um, as I've said, this is going to be this meeting is being recorded. Um, the, it will be available to you, so you can refer back to it. But remember to keep your camera off if you don't want to be in the recording. Um, we'll share a copy of the slides after the event, and please do save your questions to the end. And um, you can put them in the chat. We'll try and answer them, but if we can't, Sue will come back to you. Um, we'll use a number of um, terms throughout the presentation. Some of them will be familiar to you, but I'll just go through them. VCS, this is the voluntary and community sector. Um, organization and group, that might be used in interchangeably. Grant agreement, we're referring to the legally binding agreement. All organizations must sign um, to have the funds released. And when we talk about request, it's your request for funding, often used interchangeably with um, your project or your application. Okay, and so my name's Claire Whitney. I'm a strategic lead in the policy and strategic delivery team. We sit in the chief exec's office in the sort of center of the organization. And the grants team is part of that wider policy and strategic delivery team. Um, Sue, do you want to say hello? Yeah, hi, my name's Sue. I'm a strategic delivery officer working within the grants team. Um, and some of you will be familiar with our colleagues Moyo, Thomas, and we Caitlin's back working with us for a while um, as Lisa is on maternity leave. Um, so that's that's the, the team and we, the, the grants team's responsibility for all the activity around the management um, of the grants. Okay, I'm now going to hand over to Sue, who's going to provide a bit of background to the programme. Hi, great. So um, the Council's strategic plan provides the focus for our overall grant programme priorities. And as you can see here, that's promoting prosperity and well-being with targeted positive action when needed and building strong, cohesive communities that are part of the solution. Um, next slide. And so this table gives an overview of the grant programs which are open uh, for this year and these will be discussed in further detail shortly but in terms of this just an overview we will have a project grants program which is two strands general projects and children and young people's fund um, grants are up to twenty thousand pounds in those programs and as with last year's program, organisations will have to have an annual income of between 10,000 and 1 million in order to apply for a project grant or a children and young persons fund grant. There's one round of that funding which is open now with grants awarded from April 2024. The information sessions for these programmes will take place next week and the recordings will be on our website in the coming days. But Today we're looking at our community chess program um, and it, this will remain similar to previous years and will continue to have four rounds of funding and organisations must have an income less than £10,000 to apply. Uh, this is so that we can focus on ensuring that the community chess grants reach the grassroots organisations who the funding is intended to support. So we will continue with the healthier Hackney element of community chess grants um, funding projects that aim to get people more active and create better health and you'll get a little bit more on that shortly and the next slide so this this table outlines our closed schemes that are not currently open for applications um, specialist grants is a program to support key organizations within the borough um, and we're continuing to review this program and how it aligns with our wider approach to supporting the VCS 
and social welfare advice grants um, are funding for advice services in the borough, um, which has been very stretched, as you can manage, imagine, during the cost of living crisis. These grants were awarded in 2023 for three years, so those are uh, running at the moment, and they won't be reviewed towards, the next review will be towards the end of 2026. Uh, community infrastructure grants you might have heard of, they were awarded in 2022 and 2023 for organisations that provide continual preventative support to highly vulnerable people in Hackney. Um, there was a two-stage application um, for these three-year awards um, and they will be reviewed towards the end of that programme, which is towards the end of 2025. So, and the next slide. Great. So coming to the topic of our um, presentation today, which is the Community Chess Programme, um, the purpose of Community Chess is to find hyper-local and short-term activities that work towards the grant priorities. Um, so those two overarching priorities that we, we talked about just now. In order to apply for this fund, um, you have to be a small organisation an annual income of less than £10,000, and we do ask for evidence of that um, as part of the application process. And it's for short projects, um, no longer than 12 months, but sometimes they're only six weeks or 12 weeks or sometimes a day project. Um, Organisations may only su submit one application each round, um, but we do have four rounds in a year. So some organizations do put in an application and may get an award and then later in the year they'll put another application in as long as it doesn't overlap and as long as it meets our priorities and it you know it's assessed as something that we want to continue funding um, past examples of community chest awards include seated exercise classes for older residents in our hyper local area um, and another example is a sustainable fashion fair and swap shop to encourage environmentalism. Um, I'm going to hand over to you, Claire. Sorry, I was getting um, <laughs> getting going cracking on that. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Sue. So we've teamed up with public health colleagues who are putting some funding towards Healthier Hackney grants. And the aim of this is to develop and test a new programme that supports the least active residents in Hackney to build healthy physical activity habits and become more active. Um, they've learned a lot from working with residents and local organisations over the past year. And through this programme, um, our colleagues are particularly looking to support innovative approaches, um, work that is collaborative and where obviously you can um, um, improve outcomes. Um, they also want to encourage um, uh, proposals that are, are based around sustainability, so have a, some lasting legacy um, beyond the, the project funding and also place-based approaches. Um, so they're looking for, a, a, I suppose, a good spread across um, um, Hackney. Um, and, and, and those who are kind of organisations that are specific to local areas actually serve local areas. Um, the, the criteria, conditions and application are exactly the same as the rest of the Community Chess programme. There are just two additional questions on the application form if you're applying for the Healthier Hackney um, funding. The, our colleagues in public health are hoping that this funding will be of particular interest to community groups looking for a small amount of investment to set up or establish physical activity programmes in their neighbourhood. I'll hand back over to Sue. So. Um We've engaged with the community and the insight that we've got back from them is that, um, and also looking at wider national research, it tells us that due to a range of different reasons, uh, the following groups are least likely to be active. Um, these groups are not mutually exclusive. Many people experience multiple levels of disadvantage or inequality um, that influence their risk of being inactive. During our engagement with local residents and organisations, we heard a lot about things that can get in the way of people being active and the things that can help people be more active. These barriers and enablers should be considered as part of a healthier Hackney grant application. 
our general eligibility criteria. So that's both for community chest and if you're putting in for a healthy hour Hackney grant, is that organisations must be not for profit, value driven and principally reinvest their surpluses to, to further social, environmental or cultural objectives. And these typically organisations are registered charities or charitable incorporated organisations or charitable companies, um, companies limited by guarantee or social enterprises and community interest companies. There must be an asset lock um, and there must be a wholly not for profit and without any share capital. Um, and then structured groups of residents can also apply for community chess grants. So you might get clubs or people with informal rules. Um, but private businesses and individuals are not eligible to apply for grant funding from this programme. Like all of our uh, programme, at least 80% of the people benefiting from the funding um, must be Hackney residents. And it needs to align with the programme guidance for the scheme and it needs to include the start and end date and annual income criteria. If applicants who have received a grant through this programme in previous years have failed to fulfil the funding requirements of the previous grant, uh, that could be things like not returning um, monitoring forms um, or reports, then they might not be eligible for a grant this time. Um, it's not a fatal thing, but it is something that we do look at. In addition to the general eligibility, organisations will also need to provide a number of documents along with their application, which will be used to conduct due diligence checks. Um, and this varies slightly depending on the type of organisations. Um, and also if you are a structured group of residents applying for community chest only, um, it depends what we ask for. Um, things like insurance, it depends on the event. You might be holding it in somebody else's premises and therefore you might be covered by their insurance. So we'll, we'll look at what the circumstances are. But generally, you need to be registered with articles and a constitution, which clearly determines your aims and objectives. Um, unregistered community groups or clubs also need a set of rules. Sometimes that's called a constitution, sometimes it's just club rules. Uh, but once again, it should say why, you know, why they're coming together as a club and um, what their objectives are. Um, You'll need an organisational bank account. If it's a small group of residents, then um, there may be extra checks. Um, it may be that you could work with a larger group or use an individual's um, bank account. The, those are things that we will look at. And if, if you do have any questions, you can always get in contact with us as you're doing your application form. We're happy to talk through these things with you. Um, if you have been going for a while, we'd be looking at annual accounts to show income and expenditure. Um, in case of smaller groups, it's more like, you know, it's more money in, money out um, and a projection for uh, how you expect the next year to go with this funding. Um, and once again, be able to demonstrate that 80 percent of the beneficiaries will be Hackney residents. The VCS grants programme generally doesn't accept applications from any of the following politically or exclusively religious activities um, for if, it, if there's excessive overheads, if it's for capital or building costs, if it's for costs or liabilities that were incurred before the start of the project, um, then we wouldn't pay for those. The cost of work or activities that any other personal organisation has a statutory duty to undertake. Um, we can't fund activities undertaken outside of Hackney, although there may be some exceptions. So if you're doing a day trip somewhere, that's okay. Um, previous debts won't, won't be funded, including contingent liabilities or possible charges relating to past events. Um, we can't pay for something that may not occur, contingency costs, interest charges and service charges, depreciation of fixed assets, or any costs that are not outlined within the grant application. So everything needs to be tied to what the project is about and what it will be costing. So back to you, Claire. Thank you. So budgeting, um, very important in any application for funding. Um, and that's become more so the case during the cost of living crisis. So when preparing your application, please consider the following. Please think very carefully and realistically when putting your budget together. 
and factor in um, potential price rises. Um, we always look at value for money when assessing applications, but that doesn't mean we only fund the lowest cost project. Um, we understand that some things just cost more. Um, please ensure you are taking into consideration paying staff the London living wage. And we are unable to offer any uplift in grants once you've been once you've been awarded the funding. But we'll always try to be flexible around agreeing any slight changes um, within your budget after the funding has been awarded. So there's no way that we can award additional funding, but we can be flexible about a little bit about what you deliver. Please, please, please use the guidance document and this information se session to plan your application and contact us if you have any questions. Um, you know, the, I think planning is really important and it's quite, um, it's, it's always clear when applications have been planned and not done at the last minute. Um, please apply in advance of the deadline using the grants application portal. As you can imagine, the team's very busy if you have a problem on the day the, the, the application is supposed to be um, submitted. It might be difficult to get through to the team. So please, please, please try and uh, apply in advance of the deadline. The grants team will undertake um, due diligence checks based on the information um, you provide in your application. Um, so please look out. If you haven't submitted something, we'll contact you if we need miss the missing documentation. So look, please, please check your, your emails for that. Um, volunteers from within the council, so our colleagues across the council and local um, volunteering community sector organisation volunteers will conduct an assessment of your application as described below and make recommendations. All assessors will meet at a grants panel to discuss applications comparatively and take into account contextual information and key needs within the borough. They'll make their decisions at the panel these decisions will then need to be signed off by senior officers in the council. After the panel, grants officers may contact you to ask you clarifying questions on part of your application that assessors were unclear about or wanted more information on. And please ensure that you respond to any questions in advance of the deadline, as this may affect whether or not we can fund you, because obviously they need the information to make the decision. You'll know, be notified of the outcome of your application as soon as possible after the panel. We will always offer verbal feedback to all successful applicants and encourage you to reach out for this if you're not successful. Um, successful applicants will be issued with a grant agreement and then can commence delivery of their grant. More information about the process of being a grant holder is in a grantee guidance document and all of this is on the website so you can keep going back to it. Okay. Oops, sorry. And over to you, Sue. I think that's the last slide was the one you will get oh, yeah. the slide sent to you. Um, but this this slide here outlines, I think this has just been asked in um, in the messaging. So that's very timely. This this table outlines the deadlines for the first round of community chest. It's the 25th of March at 5 p.m. Um, we can't accept late applications. So please ensure that you give yourself enough time to complete and submit factoring in potential technical difficulties that may crop up. We aim to let applicants know the outcome of their application the week commencing the 6th of May, 2024. And you'll see that there are further deadlines in July, October and January as set out in that table. Back to you, Claire. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is visit the online form. Um, I can't do that, but so Sue will have to, cause I, I can't actually access uh, can I access that? I don't think I can. Yeah. I think there's a video that can take you into it. I'm, I'm not sure. It's probably more helpful just to go through each question of the online form at this stage, Claire. Right. OK. Um, so, um, so it's really to take you through a couple of the key questions on the application form. Um, I'm going to give you some tips and insights onto how you might be able to answer some of the questions and how assessors will be looking at scoring them. Um, this is comes up quite often. We really do recommend that you type up your answers um, probably onto a Word document. 
or at least copying them into a document complete just in case you have any issues with the form because it's on a like a portal so you don't want to lose information so we always suggest to people just keep a copy um of the document um so that when complete any just in case you have any issues with the form and we're unable to recover any answers lost due to technical issues so um section one of the um, application is details about your organization this section is not scored but provides helpful information the assessors to know about more about your organization and background sorry i'm just going to click through um, question 1.6 is what does your organization do so this is an opportunity um, to tell us about what your organization does in more details it's not scored but filling in this clearly will give assessors a good understanding and background of what you do as an organization so a, a, a good answer will tell the assessor a, a, you know really clearly what you do and why you exist as an organization Question 1.8 asks you uh, about your organisational leadership. Um, and that's very much around, is your organisation um, user-led? Um, and when we talk about user-led, we're, what we're referring to is, you know, over 50% of the management and trustees are from uh, minoritised communities. Um, Question 1.9 allows you to expand on your um, answer in question 1.8. So we aim to prioritise organisations who are led by people with lived experience of the issues their beneficiaries face. And where this isn't possible, we want organisations to show that they have an active commitment to involving be beneficiaries in the design and delivery of their services. And that really links back to the priorities that we mentioned earlier on around um um you know what what the aims and um of the grant program are i'll just hand over to sue you're on mute sue thank you <laughs> section two is um an important part of the application as it's the bulk of what you want to tell us about what the funding's for. So we we don't mark your application in terms of spelling and grammar, but we do need to be able to understand what you're saying to be clear. Use bullet points if you want. And perhaps ask someone who knows a little about the project to read through it to make sure it can be understood by somebody um, who hasn't been involved yet with it. We will always be proportionate in our assessment, and that means you know, the more money you're asking for, the more detail we would expect in an application. For this section and others, we have removed word counts and given word guidance instead. Um, it's important to stick to the point when answering these questions and only include details which you feel are relevant to your project. Back to you, Claire. Um, and I think that is a really um, top tip. You know, if you can find somebody who can read that, section the thing with it, the assessors don't know your organization they don't know what you're trying to do so if you can share your application with somebody else and they can understand it and it's clear it's going to be clearer to our assessors so the project um summary is very essential that is the title of your project it should you know it should um, um tell us broadly what it is um where it will be delivered in which ward or wards it will be delivered in the start and end dates um you can't remember it can't go on longer than 12 months it's spend it can be any period within that 12 months but it must be within that 12 months um and the start date's got to be in the financial year so the the, the start date and the end date have to fall within from april um 24 to the end of march 25. um and you and we don't fund retrospectively so um as sue had already said you know it has to, it can't we can't fund for something that's already started or in delivery um 
And in 2.4, we want to know the total number of beneficiaries you are hoping to work with in this project. And again, like we said about the cost, it's not necessarily a numbers game. It just needs to make sense to us. Sometimes projects work with small groups of people, but they're much more intense in terms of the work they're doing. Others projects might be larger, but less intense in terms of the activity and the, the, the input. So section two, your request. Um, question 2.5 um, is really important. Here you're asked to choose the grants priority your project is working towards and then talk about this in more detail. You should include what the project will achieve and how it fits in with your priority, how it will achieve this and how it will be delivered, who will benefit and why. And again, that comes back to how we can see that what you're trying to do fits in with the aims and objectives of the grants program. Um, so it's really important that you're, you're able to make that connection for our assessors. Think about each of these bullet points when writing your answer. Um, if an assessor still doesn't understand what your project is, after reading this section a few times, it probably won't be a very successful application. So make sure you clearly link your project and your chosen priority. They should talk to each other. And as we said before, if you can get somebody to read it who hasn't seen it before and they can say, yes, that that's clear to me, you know, it, it's clear what you're trying to do and I can understand how you're delivering against the, the, the priority you've chosen. Over to you, Sue. OK, so think about how your idea fits into one of the grants program objectives and choose accordingly um, to give you some examples about things we've done in previous years. Uh, we funded a project to support you know, adults experiencing food poverty to cook and make healthy choices um, that fitted well with priority one. For priority two, an intergenerational mentoring scheme links well to building positive relationships between different groups. Some projects may feel that they contribute to both our priorities, and this is fine um, if you can reference this in your answer, but you will need to align one more strongly <laughs> with one or the other um, in terms of the objectives and, and try not to be vague with both. So make sure you have a strong connection with one or the other. Um, and the next slide, this is how assessors will be looking at your answers um, to determine success. So assessors will give you a rating um, in each section and then an overall rating to the application based on each, each part. For example, if an assessor rates this section as good, they will know what was missing. If it wasn't clear um, or if it's not cleared up in another section, um, and they'll discuss this at the panel where all assess assessors get together um, as to whether or not they can agree to fund the application. And the next slide, um, this question is optional and is just for those who are wishing to apply for healthier Hackney funding. Um, you need to tick the box, um, otherwise you leave it blank and move on to question 2.8. You will need to, oh, it's over to you, Claire. Um, I've started, maybe I'll finish this one. <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> mind, yeah. Um, in terms of healthier Hackney, Hackney, you will need to tell us um, how your project addresses the barriers and co-design learnings identified for healthier Hackney grants in community chess grants guidance. So have a look at the guidance. There's an appendix at the back, appendix one, and it sets out everything you need to think about and talk about really in relation to healthier Hackney applications. We're particularly interested in how people will become more active as part of their everyday routines. Um, interested to see how the support will continue that, you know, the support that they'll be active will be incorporated and um, not just specific physical activities. Um, the question is, is just for organisations applying for Healthier Hackney grants. If you're not applying for Healthier Hackney grants, uh, you don't need to address this point. Um, and then the next slide just shows you how we um, assess an answer. 
So a very good answer will clearly address the barriers in co-design learning outlined in the guidance. And the proposal will clearly address how it will help people become more active as part of their everyday routines. And then there's various other categories that it could be assessed with. And back to you, Claire. Thank you. So question uh, 2.8 is asking how your project will be run and managed. Um, please make sure you provide relevant background experience for your organisation and the team. Um, discuss all the elements of your project planning and delivery, including, you know, what planning you're going to, you've done what, and, and, and how you plan to deliver and evaluate your project. It often helps to go through the project step by step so assessors can get a comprehensive picture of your project. So again, they don't have to work hard. It's all there for they can see very clearly how that's going to be delivered. OK, and once again, we do set out for you um, how it will be scored. A very good answer will be very clear on how the project will be managed, who will be involved and what relevant skills and experience they bring. Over to you, Claire. Thank you. So as we've mentioned for previous questions, we want organisations to show they have an active commitment to involving beneficiaries in the design and delivery of their services. In this question, we're looking for you to demonstrate how your beneficiaries shape and guide your project. So good answers will show how beneficiaries are involved in every stage of the project, including planning, delivery and evaluation. And good answers will also show how feedback is taken from beneficiaries and used to shape what you do again in the future. Um, so another top tip, give examples of how beneficiaries have been involved in your previous projects, if you have it, as this will show your experience in this area. So hopefully, I mean, what, what, what can be done is people will show how they've used learning from previous projects and the beneficiaries feedback to form the project that they're asking for funding from for us in this current period. So over to you, Sue. And once again, the scoring criteria for question 2.9. And you'll see a very good answer will clearly show how and why the project beneficiaries are involved at every stage and how their input shapes the project. Over to you, Claire. Thank you. So um, all projects, large and small, present risks. In this section, you're expected to complete a risk assessment, just outlining what risks may occur and how you might manage them. Um, a good application will clearly identify any relevant risk, assess the probability of this happening and the impact if it did happen. Um, and then how and, and then, you know, just really describing what you do to manage that in practice. Um, this will look very different for every project um, and is assessed by assessors just in kind of, you know, you having evidence that you've thought about it. It's really that, you know, thinking what, what might happen um, that's a risk to me su uh, successfully delivering this. This might happen, this might happen. What do we do if those two things do happen to stop, um, you know, to make sure that we can still successfully um, deliver the project? Um, never be subtle or imply things about risks. Always be very explicit. If your project is working with children or vulnerable people, you should always be referencing safeguarding in your risk section. Um, and yeah, in the past, I suppose you'd think about COVID, things like COVID as well, probably a little bit less relevant. Sometimes it's been just something very straightforward, like um, an outdoor cinema event. What if it rains? It's a risk. And what would you do to mitigate it? It sometimes, you know, it, it, depending on the project, you just have to think what might happen that makes this go wrong. Back over to you, Sue. And there we are setting out how the assessors will be looking at question 210. So a very good answer there will clearly acknowledge the main risks and have a clear and appropriate response for each one. So it's risk, mitigation, risk, mitigation. And the next slide takes us on to section three of the application form. Um, and that's all about your budget. Um, this section is scored and there are calculator buttons to help you to ensure your breakdowns are correct. Uh, so make sure your budget breakdown makes sense in conjunction with the rest of the application. So um, you will have outlined the steps and what's, you know, the particular parts of the project. Um, and so in your budget, we'll be looking for the costs of those steps. Um, it may be 
if you start talking about items in your budget that are not discussed elsewhere in the application, um, then that might confuse the assessors um, and you may not be uh, scored so highly with that. Thanks, so question 3.1 how much are you asking from us for your project um you only need to complete a 3.2 if you're asking for us to part fund your project for example if the whole project costs two thousand and you're only asking for a thousand from us and the remainder is coming from um another uh, another funder um Sorry, let's get on to this. So we have a budget table. Um, so this is another important section as it tells us about how you would have, you've costed your project and what you're spending the grant on. Um, you don't have to use all of the rows provided. Um, there are eight. Um, there's space below if you want to add more details as well. There are three columns, one for the expenditure heading, what the cost is, one for the amount you are requesting from our funding, another if you're getting funding from other sources uh, for this. Um, and on the, uh, um, I'll just go on to the next slide. At the bottom of the budget table, there are two sections with calculator icons. These are to calculate the sums that you have put in your table. Always use these and check that everything you put in your table is adding up correctly. We see a lot of projects fall down because their numbers aren't consistent. Yeah. And then this slide. Um, is the slide. This sets out the scoring criteria that the assessors use um, for this. A very good answer will provide enough detail and realistic costs based on the project information provided. So the budget items will clearly link to the narrative um, and this enhances the overall clarity of the project. And then the next slide looks at 3.4. Um, it's an optional question and it gives you an opportunity to tell us where you may have other funding coming in. Um, so if that's indicated, um, you can put it here that you're getting funding from elsewhere as well. If you've indicated that it's part funded your project, um, but don't put anything in this answer, then the assessor might question the viability of the project. Um, so they will be looking at this section. Back to you, Kate. Thank you. So section four is you need to put in your bank details. This is to speed up the process of payment if you're awarded funding. Um, please do it accurately. Obviously, if there's mistakes, it could um, cause problems with issuing you your grant and definitely would slow it down. Um, if you don't have an organisation or bank account, please include the bank details of one of the committee members or a host organisation who will be the grant will be paid to. Um, and as we've said before, if your grant is to be paid into a personal account, we will ask for more information before issuing the grant. Okay. This section is not scored, but it's important to upload due diligence documents with your application, as this is all checked by the grants team to ensure you are eligible to apply. Um, as we explained earlier, the exact documents you need vary slightly depending whether you're a charity or a small group or a club. But generally, the things that you're going to need to attach are uh, your official governing document, club rules, uh, an equality and diversity policy, a health and safety policy, your most recent set of audited externally verified annual accounts, um, a redacted bank statement. Um, with the details matching the payment details that you give us, that where you want your money to go if you do get a grant. Um, a certificate of insurance, that could be employee liability insurance if you have staff. Um, it may be public liability insurance if there's some risks that need coverage before you get going with your project. And where applicable, safeguarding children or vulnerable adults policy, depending on the nature of your project. Um, so. What you do is you click the upload button on the portal um, and then you identify your document on your computer or laptop and attach it and it should upload. Um, there is some guidance online if you have any problems and you can always give us a ring as well if there's any difficulties with that. And then the next slide. Um, the last part of the form is the declaration 
so you need to tick that you confirm that you're authorized to submit the application on behalf of your club group or charity and that the information that you've provided is correct and that you understand the condition of the grant um should you be successful um you must include your name and position and if you've not already signed up to our newsletter 6.2 um, if you click there on the at the bottom of the application form, that will add you to our mailing list. So you'll be aware maybe of, you know, community chess rounds coming up and the dates and the deadlines and any other information that, you know, we come across during the course of the year that might be useful to your organisation. Back to you, Claire. Right, you'll be you'll be pleased to know we're on the last four slides. So we've nearly come to an end. <laughs> so, um, um, and hopefully we will have some time for some questions at the end. So we just to remind people, and I say this all the time, but and I know you hear it over and over again, we always receive a lot more applications than we're able to fund on the grant programme. I think the job gets more and more difficult every year in terms of making decisions. Um, we just can't fund everything that is applied to for from the council. Your application is going to undergo eligibility and due diligence checks by the grants team, as we've outlined. It gets assessed by volunteer assessors from the council and the volunteering community sector. Um, we give them training. They're given guidance documents to support them to make a fair assessment of the applications. And we, we use the scoring criteria that you've already seen. So that is what the assessors use, nothing else to, to score your application, what we've described through this presentation. Um, we're for recruiting volunteers over the coming weeks. So please do look out for further information about this and sign up if you'd be interested in taking part. If you're going to be applying um, to uh, part of the programme, it doesn't matter, we just put you onto a panel that your organisation isn't applying for. Um, we ask clarifying questions, um, which will allow us to ask you questions about anything unclear on your application before discussing at panel. Um, as I said, please try to respond to this quickly because if you don't get back to us for the deadline, all of the panels are scheduled in, as you can imagine. It's a big task coordinating all those people to mark and score application forms and then come back into a panel. So if you haven't responded by the deadline, we have to take your, we haven't got that clarification for the panel. Um, during the panel, assessors discuss each of the applications in comparison to each other. Um, they take into a consideration issues such as equalities, the council's strategic objectives, spread around the borough, um, those sorts of things. We'll always offer feedback, as I said, to unsuccessful applicants, and we do encourage you to do that because obviously it helps in terms of future applications. Um, there's lots of documents and resources available on the council's website and the community grants part of the website. Um, we are constantly update it and there are um, links that you, we've, we've put some of them here. The VCS prospectus gives you an overview of the whole programme. So if you haven't yet engaged with other, um, other sort of um, things that have, we've been doing um, since the launch, you can actually look at the prospectus. It's the kind of everything's in there, what, what the grants programme is made up of. Um, there's a guidance document for each of the grants program, which concludes in for more information. So make sure you're looking at the right guidance document. Um, we've compiled a document with information on general support available for VCS organisations. So that's worth having a look at. Um, and we've also got some resources in our website that you can use to help check your policy documents for due diligence purposes, because the responsibility for, for those documents lies with the voluntary and community sector organisations, not with the council. What we are doing is just checking that you have them and that, you know, so that we can fund you. Um, the, the responsibility lies with the organisations to make sure that they have good policies and procedures in place. It protects you as organisations and the trustees. Um, and we're going to, we've also creating the video resources to guide you through specific processes. And that's what we're doing today. So this is being recorded so that we can put it on the website. And if you ever think, oh, what was, what was Sue saying? You can go back to it in the, you can find it on the website and you can find the, find the presentation. So. Thanks, Claire. So additional support is available. Um, you can ring us. Um, and also through partner organisations in the borough, many of which you will be familiar with. Um, we can always answer general questions, 
Hackney CBS are able to provide um, application support through their organisational development team. And the East London Business Alliance are also able to offer um, a review service of your application. So they take trained uh, business volunteers and pair you up and they have a look through and they can provide you with comment and feedback, which can be really useful. Um, the application support services are free. Um, so you just need to get in contact with them. The details are here and also on our website as well. Back to you, Claire. Oh, last slide. So after this session, we'll be in touch with the short feedback form along with a copy of the slides. Um, um, Sue's already put them in the chat, but we'll send them to you. Um, we'll, as I said, we'll put this recording online so you can go back to it and, and find bits that you might have um, forgotten or you just want to be reminded of. And um, what I'm going to do now is stop recording and then we'll take some time for um, uh, questions. Lovely. Thank you.